You probably know that gender equality and equal rights between men and women are politically and legally agreed goals to strive for all over the world, also in the Arctic region. The goals are expressed in international political agendas such as the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Uh, they are also legally binding principles expressed in international human rights instruments and in national political and legal instruments with obligations for the states and for the public governing bodies. But maybe you are not aware of what gender equality and equal rights between men and women exactly means. And more probably, you are not aware of the magnitude of the multi-level political and legal instruments to what extent they are obliging and what the obligations mean. Is it sufficient to have anti-discrimination legislation or are active measures to promote full and effective equality necessary or do we need both? And is it only the relationship between men and women that is or should be addressed? How about persons not identifying themselves as either men or women or are comfortable with a male and female binary? Also, in what way may the obligations be controversial and colliding with other obligations and interests? And moreover, how and by whom are the obligations monitored? In this chapter on law and governance, you'll find a short introduction to the central concepts. You'll also find a rich body of documents of varying kind, offering an overview of the political and legal obligations regarding gender equality and equal rights between men and women relevant in the Arctic region. Moreover, you'll find an analysis of the instruments, their importance and shortcomings. And the chapter demonstrates that the governance of the Arctic so far do not actually prioritize gender equality and more generally that the goal of gender equality is not fulfilled within the region. It is highlighted that the concept of gender equality together with other concepts such as individual rights, power, culture and tradition might be considered as controversial and as imposed on the region and its population. Such controversies are recommended to be taken seriously and permitted to impact the way forward. It is essential to be aware of the need of more knowledge about and analysis of different processes used to negotiate and implement gender equality in different contexts. The chapter offers both broad and deep knowledge about the political and legal goals and obligations and it facilitates the process towards a nuanced and including gender equality in practice. It also points out some problems that need to be addressed and ends with a couple of policy recommendations directed to the governance of the Arctic. Mm -hmm.